right, welcome back to Ducks and Pucks. This is your host, Mike Walters, along with my co-host, Eddie Jones. We're going to get you caught up on uh, last week's uh, games and um, the games coming forward. We'll preview for you. Plus, we've got some uh, Bolesky news, some injury news, and several questions to get to. But uh, first up, let's uh, go back to the uh, Vancouver game, Eddie. Uh, kind of what we expected. It was a tight game. Um, you know, we ended up coming up on the short side here, but uh, it was a two to one game, and uh, it wasn't necessarily a bad game for the Ducks. Just, uh, just couldn't quite uh, get the two points in this one. Yeah, and you know, it's a, it's another one goal game, um, but it's, you know, surprisingly, it's the the first one goal game we've lost in regulation this season. You know, previously being twenty six zero and seven, and and it's the Canucks' first regulation win against the Ducks in over two years. So, it's uh, something you don't see often, and. You know, we, we saw a couple couple guys start. Uh, was Newski getting his uh, his first start for the for the Ducks this year? And you know, he had a he had a pretty decent game. Played 22 minutes, uh, minus one one shot, not too bad. And you know, like you said, the it, well, the Ducks didn't have a bad effort. Uh, you know, they shut him down defensively. They they just couldn't get anything past Lack. You know, he had 29 saves. And you you look um, in the first period with Getzloff hitting the crossbar like a minute 20 in and. You know, it looked like everything was going right, and they, they you know, they're playing some good hockey. They, they, you know, arguably they dominated the first period out shooting Vancouver 12 to five, and um, but then the bad play behind the net, and Raquel and Anderson kind of misplay the puck, and uh, Hanson dishes out to Horvat, and he scores uh, halfway through the first period. Yeah, and I mean the the Ducks at least came back. You know, uh, Edom got a goal in the third period, which is nice to see. Um, you know, pick up his fifth on the season. And um, a little bit of controversy, you know, later on in that period, it looked like uh, Corey Perry had scored. Uh, he had snuck the puck uh, past Lack, and uh, it sat on the goal line. Um, Lack falls backwards. The puck uh, gets pushed across against the post there, and it looks like uh, he covers it up. Uh, you know, the refs uh, blow the whistle. The, uh, the puck uh, goes in the net, but uh, the refs took away the puck on there. What did you think, uh, Eddie? A lot of people were upset uh, one way or another about this call. Yeah, no, like you said, uh, a lot of people had different opinions on the call. Uh, you know, some people were saying that it was going to be uh, it was a goal. Some people were saying no goal. You know, it, it, it's uh, you know, it was a, it was a tough call. Definitely, you know, the take after Cassian scoring right after. But I think the call on the ice was good. Uh, it, it it was a we didn't cross the line until he blew the whistle, and the only then it crossed the line after the play was already dead. So I think it was a good call. It just, you know, uh, deflating to you know to have the, the lead taken away, and then obviously, you know, about two, a minute or two later, Cassian gets the goal, and you know, no one covering him in front of the net, and he makes his pay, and you know Vancouver ends up getting the win. But I, I think all in all, it wasn't that bad of an effort, and you know, um, also Thompson uh, with his assist on the Edom goal, he uh, he records his hundredth career point, so it's a milestone for him as well. Yeah, I agree. I think I think the Ducks played well in this game. I think the only issue still in this game was the uh, the power play. You know, the Ducks uh, went zero for three, and this one uh, they got Wisniewski back, and and you could see him, you know, taking some of those blue line shots like we expected. But I think that was probably the part that you know uh, Boudreaux would want the Ducks to work on um, in this contest. Yeah, and you look at the the second period too, just to you know elaborate a little bit more on that. You know, a couple power plays on in the second period and. You know, there's a, uh, some really good saves on on uh, by Lack that could have really, you know, sparked their power play there if they had to win in. Uh, Perry getting robbed uh, right in front by Lack's pad, and then uh, near the end of that power play, Fleischman getting denied um, right in the slot with a glove save from from Lack. So you know, a couple chances on the power play where you know, we we could have got a goal and and gone ahead or, or tied the game earlier, and you know, Lack Lack kind of saved the day for them that game. You know, no wonder why he was first star. Uh, yeah, I agree. You know, uh, Freddie played in this game after playing from Friday's game against the Penguins, and, you know, he didn't have a bad game either, Eddie. You know, he only gave up two goals in this one. Uh, you can't really uh, fault him for this game at all. No, no, he had a good game, and, you know, two goals on 16 shots is never that good, but um, the goals he got, you know, scored on him, I, I, you could maybe on the first one you could blame him. You know, him and Raquel kind of misplayed the puck, and he, he kind of dishes it right out to Hanson, who feeds Horvat. Um, but, you know, you look at the second goal, there, nobody really covers Cassie, and he kind of skates in out from, from the point, gets by everybody, and just taps in one that kind of just Anderson doesn't get enough of, and it squeaks right through him. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was a tough loss overall. I think that, uh, you know, they played better, obviously, from uh, Friday's game against Pittsburgh. They definitely had a better second period. And, uh, you know, they went – going into uh, Wednesday's game against Calgary looking to, you know, end this two-game losing streak. And 
we thought this game was going to be high scoring. Eddie, you know, the Ducks winning the last two, uh, six to three. But uh, this one was a wild game with uh, the Ducks losing this one, six to three. Yeah, and you know when when Getzlaf opened the scoring with two goals in in the first period, and he actually his two goals were the fastest by one player to open a game in franchise history too. And you're you're thinking, well, this game's going to get out of hand, and, and the Ducks are going to maybe win this and you know get another six goals on Calgary, and you know, but. The way Calgary's played this season, you can't count them out. And really, after those two two goals, Calgary took over the play. And um, you know, staging gets a goal halfway through uh, the period. Uh, Paul Mary giving giving it away, uh, exiting the zone, and um, staging takes advantage of a rebound and, and pots it in. And you know, from there, uh, almost a minute later, uh, Goudreau uh, tips in a shot from um, from Schlemko at the point, but it gets called as a no goal, uh, which you know is kind of it was relief for, from how you know the pressure they were putting putting on, trying to get two goals in, in less than a minute. Um, but you know, to no avail. And it, with five minutes to go in the period, Goudreau actually gets one that counts. And Goudreau, I mean, uh, Boschman and Perry Kessler, they all miss Goudreau coming in. And you know, a weak one. He puts a weak backhander past Gibson off the post. And you know, he re- he probably really should have had that one. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, it seemed like after that first period, the momentum totally shifted to the Flames, and then in the second period. You know, it was another disastrous period for the Ducks. I mean, uh, Calgary got three goals, two of them on the power play. You know, and then at that point, it was, you know, down to five to two. Uh, you know, Hampus was able to answer back uh, with just a minute left in the second to, to get the Ducks back in there. But uh, just couldn't pull it out. You know, the, uh, the third period, a little unlucky. You had that, that play with uh, Gibson and the puck and uh, Maroon crashing into him and, and, and the puck gets loose and Hoodler puts it in to make it, you know, six to three. Um, but I mean, that was at the end of the game anyways, but still it's just, uh, it's a tough outing. I mean, we thought this was going to be a high scoring game. We thought the ducks would, you know, probably win this one, but, uh, just came up on the other side. I mean, we, we did do better on the power play, but, um, it seemed like after maybe the you know first five to 10 minutes, Eddie, it just seemed like, I don't know, the ducks, um, uh, they just couldn't keep up with the speed of the flames. Yeah. And, you know, we've, we've been privy to some really bad second periods, throughout you know the the season so far and and this one was really a different kind of bad second period you know what we've been used to so far is just getting out shot you know by 10 to 15 shots and you know 20 to 5 and and letting in a couple goals or letting in one and you know, this was a different kind of, of period we we outshot them 12 to 4 and you look at that you could say you know maybe we we dominated them and, and you would think the ducks are the ones who scored three goals but calgary scoring three goals on four shots is you know, you, you don't want to blame it on Gibson either, or, but you know it, it's got it's kind of hard when three goals on four shots in a period, and, and you know they were they were good they were good goals. Um, you know, Stajan uh, right in front of the net, Thompson couldn't tie him up. Uh, you know, Ma- Monahan in the slot, he's got an open shot, he's gonna score that anyway. And and then Weidman and Goudreau with the give and go, it's you know they were hard shots to stop for Gibson, but you know when anytime you let three goals on four shots, it's, it's not good and. You, know, you look in the in the third period, the Ducks, you know, outshot the outshot Calgary nine to three two. So it was an, it was another period where we could have got some going. We just couldn't get a goal, obviously, and and then Hoodler puts it away on on a misplay by Dupre and Maroon. Yeah, and then you know, in this one, what what did you think about Gibson staying in in the third period? Do you think that you know Boudreau should have taken him out and put Anderson back in, or? You know, do you think it was okay letting Gibson ride it out? Because, uh, you know, as we'll get to it, he uh, goes back with Gibson, uh, you know, obviously in the wild, and we'll get to that in a second. But what did you think about his decision there? Um, I think it was a good decision. I would have left him in there, too. Um, you know, the Ducks weren't playing good defensively, and um, obviously Anderson's coming off a couple bad performances, too. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to throw him in necessarily and then have them both slumping going into the next game, you know. Maybe uh, keep Gibson in. You know, they let him learn from those mistakes, and obviously when you throw him against Minnesota, we'll see in the next game, uh, he rebounds pretty well. Yeah, definitely, and, and we're going to bring in uh, Alex right now uh, to talk about the uh, Minnesota uh, game. All right, we have uh, Alex back on the show. Uh, thanks for joining us again, Alex. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, you know, this was the uh, the third game between the Ducks and the Wild, and, uh, you know, this ended up being another one-goal game, um, a tight battle with the Ducks winning 2-1. to one. Um, Anything surprise you in this game uh, from the, the previous uh, meetings, Alex? Uh, not at all. Uh, I'm a little surprised that uh, Clayton Stewart and Stoner, uh, Clayton Stoner, Chris Stewart, went out right at the beginning, right at the beginning there. there. That's not really That's the not Wild really style. style. Uh, but other than that, 
you know, this is one of these cases for the Wild where they're out shooting their opponents significantly, uh, out chancing them, and not putting quality shots on net. So, no, it doesn't surprise me, I, I guess. Yeah, you know, um, you guys have still been, you know, making the uh, the battle for the playoffs, and you have a uh, Dubnyak that's been in there riding, you know, uh, the seat for you guys for, you know, getting up to thirty games now. Um, do you think that that's going to be uh, the key for you guys making the playoffs, or what is it going to take? I think that's probably it. Uh, Devin Dubnik's been absolutely spectacular. Uh, he just made his twenty seventh consecutive start Saturday night in St. Louis. Uh, he's inching up on Frederick Anderson's record of thirty two. Uh, not an NHL record, but I think in the last five years, that's the uh, the big one. So that's probably the key for the Wild. Uh, Kemper started out really hot, and uh, Backstrom was serviceable, although that's really all you can say about him. Uh, but Dubnik has completely turned the season around and uh, definitely wins team MVP and, and should probably be in conversation for other honors. Yeah, the way it sits right now, I mean, you guys are looking at fifth place, so you know you're you're, you're still in there. It's going to be a interesting battle because uh, if you guys end up in the wild card spot, uh, in that second spot, you we, we could be playing each other in the first round, which is probably, in my mind, at least the most ideal matchup. Um, I think we're all kind of leaning towards the Wild being the number seven seed in the West, unless Chicago or Nashville really skid, and and I I don't anticipate that happening. Although I think Anaheim will beat uh, Nashville here. Uh, So between Anaheim and uh, St. Louis, who I think is going to win the Central, I'd much rather see the Wild go after Anaheim uh, compared to St. Louis, who the Wild are absolutely awful against. At least Anaheim, it's it's competitive and it's fun hockey. Yeah, and and going back to to Dubnik for a bit, when when you guys first picked him up, what did you really expect from him? You know, now you look at his numbers, he's 19 five and one now i believe actually might be 25 one after beating the blues last night and you know picking up 41 saves there what did you expect when you first picked him up and, and how surprised are you by by how well he's done so far uh we didn't uh, expect 25 and one with a, a gold against average right around 167 and a save percentage of around 930 with the wild that's uh that's extremely impressive uh the consensus around here seemed to be well they're trying at least you know they're they're going through this massive skid. At least they're going to try something. Uh, and there was also a bit of a sentiment of, well, we're really thin in the minors, so why give up a pick for a season that's that's headed for the tanks? Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it didn't make a lot of sense to me at the time. I thought uh, that the Wild were going to go after somebody like a Cam Ward, who Carolina was open to trading, somebody that they thought could start for uh, several years. But Dubnik's been such a rock star, uh, and he's has a very similar pedigree to what the wild like uh, tall. They seem to really like goalies from Saskatchewan uh, and uh, just tracks the puck. Well, and he's probably the first goalie, at least in my mind, that's pretty aggressive on the puck as well. It keeps it moving. So he's been an absolutely pleasant surprise for us and, and made some great saves in that, uh, that game. Mm-hmm. And, and with uh, your next few games coming up, you got Nashville on Tuesday, Washington on Thursday, and then St. Louis again on, on Saturday, how important are, are these three games to you know keeping your playoff hopes alive? Uh, the the last projection I saw, if the Wild went five seven and one, and and Winnipeg didn't play that well, the Wild could still make the playoffs. I'm a, a big fan of the idea that they need to push and push and and even try and sneak in as a number three seed. So every two points is absolutely essential. Uh, I was absolutely pleased that they beat St. Louis on Saturday. I don't know if I expect a repeat on Friday, uh, but even to snag one point out of some of these games uh, is is absolutely crucial. Yeah, and you look at the last you know four or five games, uh, Vanek and, and Parise have really stepped up, and you know with with Chris Stewart coming in too, and he's got four points so far in his first six games. Uh, how important is it for these guys to continue to produce throughout the season? And you really do you see anybody else stepping up to to help them out? Uh, yeah, the, we lost Jason Zucker, uh, I think between the last time we talked and now, uh, with a collarbone injury and he looked to be the the guy that was going to break a 30 goal precipice, uh, for the first time in his career and losing him was a big blow. Uh, the nice thing is, is that the wild are finding scoring when they need it. Obviously it didn't happen as much in the Anaheim game. As a uh, but Vanek's got four goals in his last four games. If you count last night's St. Louis game. 
uh, which is not something that he has been able to do for us. Uh, he hasn't even broken 20 goals yet. Uh, and, and Parisi is just a workhorse. I think he could probably uh, carry the entire team on his back at times. So it's important that they keep going. Uh, but the other uh, two people that we really need to look forward to with the Wild is uh, Nino Niederreiter, who's got 22 goals on the season, and uh, Matt Dumba, who has been a- absolutely spectacular since his most recent recall from Iowa. Yeah, and I was just going to talk about Matt Dumba a bit, too. Obviously, you know, he made the giveaway in, in the game that led to uh, Silverberg's goal. Uh, though he's had a, a pretty good season so far. Did you see him making a, a huge improvement and stepping to the top four next season? Well, I, I think our top four is pretty set. Uh, Ryan Suter is a huge uh, minute muncher as far as that goes, and Jonas Brodeen is probably the smoothest skater I've ever seen. Uh I think if this doesn't work out, he could probably go and uh, do Disney on ice for a few years. <laughs> um, and Marco Scandella and Jared Spurgeon, when they're both healthy, are, are really great. Scandella had kind of a breakout year before he tore his oblique here last week. Uh, so top four, probably not. But uh, ideally, it would be really great to see Dumba in a, a 15 or 16 minute a night roll and then a top power play assignment as well. Uh, which is something the Wild have been absolutely dismal at uh, lately. Yeah, and, and obviously when you look at the game, and we were definitely happy to have Gibson come back and, and, and make a rebound and uh, from the, the game against Calgary. And you look at the last 30 seconds, uh, Nino Niederreiter getting a, a chance on net and uh, Gibson sprawling across to, to rob him. Uh, how, how disappointed were you when you saw him sprawl across and, and glove that off the line? Uh, I'm a huge goalie fan, so I was more impressed than anything. Uh, that was that was incredible. Uh, you know, it's it's a bummer. It it stinks when when you can't tie it up and at least snag the sympathy point. But uh, Gibson, you know, he really is the real deal. And and with the exception of Valavesky, he's probably one of the best goalie prospects in the league. So it's great that he stepped up. Uh, Calgary plays such a different game than we do, so it uh, it, it doesn't surprise me a ton. Uh, and he's a rebound hog, so that uh, and and that's going to benefit you guys a lot in the long run. He doesn't give up a lot of rebounds, and that's what the Wild rely on. Yeah, and and we saw the Wild at Bergenheim and, and Leopold um, at the deadline as well. Uh, Bergenheim, you know, I believe he only has a, an, an assist so far, and and uh, you know Leopold's more a stay-at-home defenseman. Have they really added anything to the team that's impressed you, or have they just been you know core pieces, guys who can add to the to the push? Um, I I don't know what their thinking was with Bergenheim. Uh, he does have a goal. He had a goal in the, uh, the New Jersey game last Tuesday. But other than that, is, is just kind of bounced around second line, third line, fourth line, uh, and is kind of holding a roster spot for Jordan Schrader, which is probably the biggest piece of angst for a lot of Wild fans. Uh, I do like Chris Stewart a lot. Uh, I, I've heard a lot about his work ethic being kind of subpar. Uh, but I think if you put him in a situation like a lot of players, uh, where he's got a chance to make the playoffs, he's got a chance to show what he's worth, he's going to perform. Obviously, nobody was lights out in Buffalo this season. Uh, so I, I think he's a good addition, but he, he won't stay. The Wild are so deep at wing that this this is kind of a stopping grounds for him to prove that he's worth a new contract. You know, Alex, uh, shifting gears over to the, the defensive side for Minnesota, you know, you guys have the best penalty kill in the league at uh, 86.7%. Uh, is that something that you think can, you know, get the Wild to maybe the second round of the conference final, you know, in the playoffs? Is something that they can rely on along with Dubnak? Yeah, I, I really think it is. Um, you know, the, the the power play has been so bad that the penalty kill stepping up in a big way is probably why we're still winning a lot of games. Um, and and I, I don't quite know what it is uh, that, that's made them so successful. They're pretty aggressive on the puck, uh, and they're good at the clear um, – and uh, we don't have an Andrew Cogliano. We have we have Eric Howla, who's fast, but he's not as good of a player as Cogliano. They're, they're just great on the puck. Hopefully that is something that can carry on. It, it all depends on that matchup. Uh, you know, St. Louis is going to wear you down. And, and Anaheim, you guys have so many weapons, it's, it's almost not fair. Uh, yeah, and you know the, the Ducks have uh, we've won the past six games in Minnesota by one goal, so I'm sure if uh, if we meet the the Wild in the playoffs, it's going to be a pretty good series. Uh, thanks for coming on, Alex. Yeah, absolutely, my pleasure. And uh, you guys can always check out more of our writing at uh, gonepuckwild.com. That's puck with a P.
All right, and that was uh, Alex from GonePuckWild.com. That's on the uh, fan side of network. You can go out there and check out the uh, Minnesota Wild if you want. Um, and just uh, from our perspective, Eddie, uh, you know, this game, uh, Gibson came back. Um, you know, we thought maybe Freddie would start, but uh, Boudreau went with Gibson in this one, and he played extremely well, uh, uh, as we talked about, making some spectacular saves, especially that one late in the third, Eddie. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, he had a 16 save for his period, which, you know, really helped the Ducks get out of a hole. Um, you know, and then pick, uh, Boschman picking up his ninth goal, which is a, a career high, you know, uh, put us ahead, which was, you know, really thanks to Gibson in that period. And obviously he, he made a couple great saves of Palmerville and close late in the period. And, you know, a flurry of saves, including that one on Nito Niederreiter in the final seconds really saved the day for the Ducks. Yeah, I mean, it was a key game uh, at the end. I, I liked the, the tip-in uh, by Silverberg. That was a huge goal. I'm, I'm glad to start seeing him, you know, get some goals in regulation. And not that I, I don't uh, like the shootout goal uh, variety, but it's good to see him get going in the uh, the uh, regulation uh, periods, Eddie. Yeah, I know he's been heating up lately, too. He's got 15 points in his last 21 games, you know, five goals and 10 assists. It's, it's really good to see a guy like him step up. Obviously, you know, we... Um, you know, not hard on Cogliano, but he's not producing like he did last year, and I, I don't expect him to do that, you know, what he did last year. And, and you know, with Boleski out, we needed a guy to step up, and he's really done it so far. Yeah, and a couple quick notes, too, to mention. Uh, you know, this was uh, Ryan Getzloff's uh, 700th career game as a, as a Duck. Uh, we had talked about that, you know, Perry had just done that uh, a little over a week ago, so now Getzloff's up in there. And uh, he's also uh, passed uh, Paul Correa in the scoring uh, in the last game against Calgary as well. Uh, it seems like Getzloff's picked up a little bit more um, lately. Um, I'm hoping we get a little bit more action going with him and Perry back together. And uh, we'll talk about the lineups uh, a little bit later. We've got a lot of questions about them being together. But uh, what did you think about uh, Perry, Getzloff, and, and Bolesky on that top line there, Eddie? Well, I think they did a pretty solid job. Obviously, you know, they didn't get on the score sheet, but, uh, you know, they're going to forecheck hard and, you know, open up uh, up space for other lines when they get on the ice and tire some guys out. So if they're not scoring, you know, if they're, if they're forechecking and playing hard, um, I'm happy with their play. And and we'll mention, uh, what about the uh, the acting job uh, by uh, Dubniak <laughs> in this game? Uh, that was a pretty uh, hilarious moment in the uh, the second period there with uh, Perry crashing the net and avoiding him. Uh, what did you think on the play, Eddie? Well, I know Perry wasn't too impressed, and I'm sure everybody else wasn't either. You know, at least it didn't lead to a goal. Then it would have been a little bit controversial and not, not as funny. But, yeah, uh, you know, he barely hit him, and uh, Dubnyak, uh, you know, he kind of makes uh, the most of it and, and uh, you know, throws his hands up to there and falls to the ice. Uh, I thought it was pretty funny, um, but I was kind of mad about the power play. At least it didn't lead to a goal. Then, uh, you know, we were talking about something else today. Yeah, and if you want to see, uh, one of one of the followers kind of made a, a funny video. Uh, his name is uh, Sergeant with an underscore a quacker. He made up a funny video, so you can check it out. He uh, integrated uh, the, uh, the uh, American Sniper movie with it. So it's pretty uh, hilarious if you go check out uh, his Twitter feed. It's on there. Um, you know, uh, going forward, uh, coming up this week, uh, some huge games, uh, tonight we've got, uh, Nashville again, and, uh, we're playing them again, uh, battling out for that first seed in the Western conference, Eddie. Yeah. And, you know, they came off a, a big win against LA, which we're pretty happy with last night. Um, uh, they've got 93 points now, so they're tied with us, uh, uh, but they've been really struggling in, in their last few games. Um, they were, th uh, if you don't count last night, they were three, seven and oh, in their last 10 and. You know, um, it, it was kind of, uh, you know, a slump for them. And, um, you know, I'm happy they came out of it against the Kings. And you know, if you look at our, our previous games against them, we had a 4-3 a shootout win on, on the 4th of January and a 5-2 uh, win on, on February 4th. So, you know, two wins against them. Obviously, we remember that February win was a, a game that we talked about as being an important game at that point in the season. We got a big win. And it's going to be another important game tonight. And, you know, I expect to see uh, Anderson in that. You know, he has some good numbers so far in those two games. Uh, he's played both of those games. He has a 2.4 goals against average and a, and a really good save percentage at 0.934. So I think with Gibson starting the last two, we, um, they're planning on starting Anderson for this one. And also we might be seeing the Vought man back, which will be uh, which will be a good, a good sight. And we'll have to see who gets dropped out for this game. 
Yeah, and we'll talk about the lineups too a little bit. Uh, as we mentioned before, a little bit later, we got some questions about that. But uh, what do you think in this game? You think this one's going to be a close one, like the first meeting, or do you think this may be like the second one where we, you know, I mean, obviously Pecorino came back in his first game, was a little bit rusty. What what kind of game do you think we'll see tonight? Um, it all depends, and I, I think since Renee played last night, we're probably facing Carter Hutton. I, I don't think they'd risk playing Renee uh, twice in a row when they're already in such a good spot. It's not like they're fighting for a playoff spot. Uh, so I think we'll see Carter Hutton, and, and I think it all depends on uh, the Carter Hutton that we're going to face. You know, it, it depends with backups. You know, you they're either going to have a good game or a bad game, and uh, you, you know, we see Eddie Lack, who's technically a backup. He's starting for Vancouver right now because of Miller's injury. I uh, had a stellar game against us, and you know, Hutton could have come out and do the same. It could be a one-goal game, um, but I don't think he's at the same level as uh, Lack. We've seen him have good games against other teams so far, and but uh, I, I think with Hutton in that, I think the Ducks should be winning this game. Um, you know, Nashville's still a good team, even without Rene in the net. So it's it's going to be a tough game either way. But, you know, Rene's the second best goalie in the league statistically. So uh, being able to avoid him is is a big plus for the Ducks tonight. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I, mean, I think if Hutton's in there, obviously he could, you know, play well. But I think this is a game that the Ducks really need to win and get, get back in that uh, first spot in the Western Conference. And then, you know, we've got uh, the Kings coming to town on Wednesday. And, and, you know, they're still fighting it out for that uh, last spot. Um, currently now they're sitting on the outside. But, you know, it changes basically every other day between them and uh, Winnipeg. And this one, you know, obviously we've done well against the Kings um, this this whole season. But I, I still think this one will probably be a close one, Eddie. Yeah, and you look at all the games, you know, three being one-goal games and, and going to the, the shootout where we got two wins and losing an OT. And then the, the most recent game on February 27th, it was a 4-2 win. Um, but, you know, every game against the Kings is going to be a close game. And, you know, don't let them being in ninth place with 79 points fool you. They're still the defending cup champions. And, you know, they play hard against us. We play hard against them. And, and that shows in the score. And, you know, they're coming off a loss against Nashville. So they're going to be steaming from last night. They, they held the lead for most of the game. And, um, you know, they kind of collapsed in, in, in late in the third period. And, you know, it, it, and we'll have to see who's in that. Uh, it might depend on how well Anderson does against Nashville if he gets to start because it's going to be three days off, you know, Monday, Tuesday, and early Wednesday before the game off. So it's it's going to be interesting to see who gets to start there. And um, you look at Kessler as well. He has six points in, in the four games so far, four goals and two assists. So I think uh, if he can keep that up too, it's going to be important for this game coming up. Yeah, definitely. I look for Kessler to do well. I mean, he's played well against the Kings all season this year. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. I, I hope that they don't get behind like they did last game. I mean, it, it was exciting, uh, you know, getting those four goals in the third period and, uh, you know, watching uh, the early exit from the uh, the fans that, uh, you know, come from L.A. So that was a good, good side for the Ducks, you know, the strong third period. But I rather them come out and you know play better early uh, in this game, Eddie. Yeah, for sure. You never want to see them get behind, and you know last year being the comeback kids, and even a bit this year, I think Calgary might have might have stolen that title this year. But either way, you know well, the Ducks don't quit, and but you never want to see them get down, especially against a good team like the Kings. And you know there, there's always a chance to come back, but you, you'd rather be ahead for most of the game and and, and you know take the pressure to them and, and, and force them to make the comeback. Exactly, and uh, you know we wind up the the, the week uh, facing uh, Colorado Avalanche, who they're on the outside right now, uh, sitting at eleventh place currently uh, right now in the conference. But you know they're not that far out either. I mean they're only five points behind Winnipeg and four points behind the Kings. So this is another game, Eddie. That uh, you know we we've played decent against Colorado too, but we can't take them lightly either. No, and they, and they've been a really good team lately. Um, even with McKinnon going down for the rest of the season, uh, before their win last night, they were they were seven three and zero in their last ten, and now they've got seventy five points. So they're going to be making a push uh, for the playoffs. And who knows if uh, if some key teams lose games next week? You know, L A loses, Winnipeg loses, Calgary loses. Um, you know, they they could see Colorado if they pick up some wins and, and get on a roll and face us. They they could be you know, just a couple points out of a playoff spot by the time they face us. So they're going to be really pushing. Um, and you look at, you know, a guy who's really stepped up and, and since his early play in the season and since McKinnon's gone down is, is Gabriel Landeskog. And, you know, he's got seven points in his last five games before the game against Calgary last night. And, you know, it, we've only played them once this season. We got the win 3-2. to two, But if you, you look who started that game, LaBarbera was the one who started that game. So 
Um, and, you know, it might, it'll be interesting. Yeah, uh, it's definitely a game we should be winning. Um, you, you can't forget that the Colorado was such a good team last year, and you know they still show flashes of that um, too. So you you can't take them lightly, even if they're out of the playoffs. Yeah, it's going to be a battle again, too. And uh, seeing whether or not Anderson or Gibson's going to be in will be interesting, too. Um, like we said, it'll probably depend on you know, what happens uh, tonight and uh, Wednesday night. But this is another one that we should win. And, I mean, honestly, uh, you know, this week um, we should win all these games. Uh, I mean, the way that they're playing now, got everybody back, uh, just waiting on Botnan to get back. Um, we haven't heard yet. He may be in tonight, if not uh, later this week. But, uh what do you think about uh, you know the Ducks as far as the, the lineup and stuff? We've got a lot of questions uh, that people have been asking, and and if you were to go, I guess with the we'll go with the offense first as far as the forwards and whatnot. How how would you look at the lineups and um, what would you do? Uh, granted, Bolesky's in and Jackman's not, but I mean if Jackman was healthy, you could throw him in there too. Yeah, it's tough. You know, we've seen guys like Cogliano go down to the fourth line, Edom go down to the fourth line, and you know there's only a couple guys who are. Who you would you would expect to constantly be on a certain line? You know, you'd expect Getzlaff and Perry to be in that first line. You'd expect Kessler to be second line. You'd expect Raquel and, and Thompson to be centering third and fourth line. Um, and then from there, it could be really anything. Um, we've seen Silverberg um, really, you know, have a home on that line with Kessler and Cogliano at times as well. And you know, I, I kind of like to see that line stay together. And then you know, maybe does Palmieri go back up to the first line? Does Bleski stay there? Raquel, Edom, Sackatch, everybody's talking about that line. Um, you know, but they've all moved around and, and I think um, you know, I, I personally like that line. I think they should put that back together and um either Bolesky or Palmieri on that first line and then one of them goes on the fourth line with uh with Thompson and, and Maroon. Um but you know, I, when Jackman comes back you could see a guy drop out as well and I think the most likely guy to drop out is either Edom or Maroon and you know, we talked about this a little bit before too and it's a tough decision, but I think, you know, there's a couple guys who who are going to be mainstays in the lab, and then from there, you know, they, they could make any changes um, that they see fit. Yeah, I agree with you on uh, a lot of the points that you made there, Eddie. I think for the way it's going now, I would like to see Bolesky on the top line with uh, Perry and Getzloff. Um, you know, I think that's going to work out well. Uh unless for some other reason Bruce decides to change it, which we know he, he likes to do that frequently. But I, I like that on the top line. And uh, I think, like you said, I like the Cogliano, Silverberg, Kessler line as the second line. Um, you know, our third line, our favorite was the, we called it the Cakes line with um, Sekach, Raquel, and Edom. Um, so that's my third um, lineup uh, that I would have um, going in. And then the fourth line would just have to be, you know, it'd be Nate Thompson, obviously. And then you'd have uh, Jackman, uh, Edom, Maroon uh, rotating in there, Palmieri probably as well, uh, you know, kind of be whatever's left over, however Bruce is feeling, but that's kind of the way I, I look at it, that's, you know, the players need to develop chemistry, and I, I think those were the ones that were working the best, at least the top three, and I think the, you know, the fourth line is just going to kind of be whatever Bruce decides to do. Yeah, for sure, and, you know, we also, if you move into the defense, we saw Wisniewski get his two first, um, starts this week and Botnin's almost back Manson being sent down and holds her as a concussion so a little bit of a lineup change up uh, who do you you know if everybody's healthy who do you want to play on defense going into the playoffs yeah we had some questions about that too like you said and uh obviously when Botnin comes back he'll be in there so you, you go you know Botnin um you'd have to go with Lindholm and uh Beauchemin. Fowler uh definitely in there as well um, but I, you know, I like Dupree. I, I think he should be in there over Stoner. I mean, that that's my choice, but I, I know, um, we had talked about this before, but, um, uh, talking to Dan Wood about this, it sounded like Stoner may be the, the one to bottom out the sixth, um, you know, guy, but, uh, no, nah, I, I think, uh, Dupree and Wisniewski and that would be my top six, Eddie. Yeah, that's fair enough. For an, and I agree with that too. I'd like to see, you know, Fowler, Wisniewski, Lindholm, Boschman, and, and to pray and bond and in there and you know if stoner might be the preferred but i you know like you said and, and i think a lot of people agree they'd rather have to pray start if he's playing well and you know he's played pretty good so far he's been physical and he's picked up a couple assists too so you know he, he could help us really make a push and you know you look at a, a, something that's really been talked about lately um the ducks are in the race for the president's trophy you know with nashville st louis chicago 
you know, you know, Pittsburgh, the Islanders, Tampa Bay, Montreal, the Rangers, you know, it's one of the most wide open presidents races, the president trophy races we've seen in a while. Um, you know, the question kind of was, is, is do we really want it? And, and, you know, do you, do you care if we get the president's trophy? Do you want it or, or do you not want it? What do you, what do you, what's your really, your view on the president's trophy? Well, I think uh, we talked about this before, and, and you know, you look at the stats since it's been around, and we, we had talked about how uh, almost 40% of the teams make it to the Stanley Cup final. But I think the the wrench that's kind of thrown in that, Eddie, and some people have hit me up this week uh, about it, too, is the playoff structure. You know, the playoff structure, obviously, last year and this year is completely different than it used to be. Uh, for those of you that aren't aware, it used to be a regular seeding of one through eight with one playing eight and two playing seven and so on in the first round within the second round being reseeded based upon, uh, you know, how you finished. So in the past being first really meant a lot more because you always played the lower seed in the first three rounds. Now with the new system in place, it, it's not as important in my mind because if you're the first seed, like we saw how the ducks were, we were, we were first in the Western, um, uh, uh, conference in the uh, and also in the Pacific last year, um, it doesn't matter because you end up playing those division people uh, in the first two rounds, Eddie. So to me, um, you know, the past history of the President's Trophy has been good, but now with the current playoff system, I, I don't see it mattering as much. Yeah, and and it all depends because sometimes you will play that eighth seed team, and you know we had that last year with Dallas with uh, five central teams making it, so we got Dallas, and you no, know, it's still a hard series, but they were the they were the bottom team in the, in the Western Conference, and you know it's all random, and you know a lot of times you'll see four and four from each division, or you'll see it like this year where where it's most likely Winnipeg and, and Minnesota will make it, um, but you know if LA makes it, then like you said, it'll it'll be like that, it'll be four and four, and. And you'll have to see us playing uh, the Kings or you know possibly the Flames and and you know we got a question from Adam Hutchison too and uh, on on Twitter and he said who do you think the Ducks will get in the first round and, and who do you want to get so I'm gonna I'm gonna direct that towards you Mike. Yeah, uh, and there's been a lot of conversation about this too lately and there's been a lot of people telling me hey, you know let the Kings make it get them in eighth let's play them and you know take them out you know uh, payback for last year and. And, uh, you know, I, I have mixed feelings about that. I mean, I agree with everybody. Obviously, we would love to have them barely make it and then have us knock them out. But I'm telling you right now that they're not going to get knocked out that easily. you got to give the Kings some credit. I mean, they are still a good hockey team. Even though they're sitting on the outside, they've been bouncing back and forth between 8th and ninth the last couple weeks. I, I have confidence that the Ducks will beat the Kings if we did meet them in the first round. That's not my issue. But my issue is beating them and coming out healthy for the second round eddie that's what concerns me yeah and you look where we are right now and i don't think there's any way we drop the pacific division title it all depends on if we move ahead and, and get first when we're fighting with three central division teams for for that first spot and, and being able to play that bottom wildcard team um do i think we'll beat out nashville st louis or chicago i think we have a good chance um I think, honestly, in my opinion, I think St. Louis will be the ones who, who take the the President's Trophy in the end. They've been on a roll lately. Obviously, they lost last night. Uh, I think they have the best chance right now. Obviously, them having two games up on us and only being two points behind. Um, but, you know, if you look at who we're going to play right now, um, if the playoffs ended today, uh, we'd be playing Minnesota uh, because they're in that, that first wild card spot. And, uh, you know, Nashville will be playing Winnipeg. And, I, yeah, obviously, we've seen the last times we played Minnesota. You know, we've won in Minnesota six times in a row, all by one goal games. And obviously, last night was a was a or the last game against Minnesota was a, a one goal game. And you know, that's always a tough series against them. And like you said, if if Winnipeg, I mean, it gets in there, possibly gets in that spot, we might have to play them. You know, Calgary is a, a possibility, even Vancouver and, and LA. So right now, it's 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 hard to to really say who we're going to play because we could play any of those those teams down from 5 to, to 11 in, in the Western Conference. Yeah, and I think uh, a lot of that has been, you know, debated in the last week about who we're playing and, and whatnot. And, and my message to everybody is, you know what, I don't really care who the Ducks play. Uh, the main thing is the Ducks need to worry about themselves. We need to get the power play back on track. We need to stay healthy and figure out who's going to be in net, if it's going to be Gibson or Anderson, and, and go from there. And I think if the Ducks take care of themselves in those areas, I, I don't really care who we play in the first round. I think we'll beat them. 
Um, you know, I just my concern is is like last year we played Dallas, who who beat on us physically, and then playing um, the Kings that could do that too. But I do think conversely that Murray's made a lot of good decisions, and I think we've got a lot stronger team, especially on the blue line now. So I, I think if the Ducks iron out their few issues, we'll we'll be fine uh, at least for the first couple of rounds, Eddie. Yeah, I think in the first round we we should be beating any of those teams, you know, Vancouver, Calgary, Minnesota, Winnipeg, even even LA if they end up making it. Uh, I think we should really be beating them too. And you know, like you said, it all comes down to that second round when you've got to play one of those other four teams that are in the top with us, the Nashville or St. Louis or or Chicago. If you have to play one of those teams in second or third round. Um, it's definitely going to be tough, and and you know those are the the real tests. I think we have to look forward to. Exactly, and uh, you know some other player uh, updates and stuff that we've had is uh, you know people still asking about Valeski. Um, you know, you and I had talked about before the trade deadline that you know his value was at the highest uh, if they were going to move him, and obviously they didn't. Uh, Murray citing you know uh, reasons saying that he wanted Bolesky on the team. He feels that he's necessary to go all the way, which uh, you know you and I don't disagree with. Um, but there's a little bit of issue with it. I don't know if everybody's aware. It's not just the the money issue with re-signing, but it's also the no trade clause, Eddie. Um, that's been kind of an issue with Matt at right now. Yeah, and you know I I think um, I I feel fifty fifty about about the situation and keeping him. Obviously, I think. You know, those are the types of players, if you can't get a deal done and, and you don't know still if you're even going to get a deal done, um, you know, those are the kind of guys you got to move when their value's at the highest. I can understand if he was in a, a you know, an Evander Kane situation, you know, not at the same level of playing, but, you know, injured all season or having a, a issues off the ice where his value is at its lowest. Um, so trading him isn't that, isn't that good of an issue, uh, you know, good of an idea. But, you know, he was having a, a career season and, and, you know, he was injured, but being it, you could still trade him to a team uh, that was able to wait and, and, and still make a push, and his value was high. And, you know, look at some of the guys, prices guys were going for. I think we could have got a decent return for him. Uh, but now, obviously, we're stuck with signing him, which is not a bad thing either. Um, but, you know, he wants the no-trade clause, and, and you know, it's impossible to move him now. So it's either they work something out, we give him the no-trade clause, um, we work out a fee, or, or he ends up going in, in, uh, in free agency. Yeah, and like you, you know, I have a little bit of mixed feelings. I mean, I, I like Valeski a lot. I like the way he plays, and I, I do want the Ducks to re-sign him. Um, you know, I know that the, the no-trade clause is a sticking point right now that it's come up. But uh, I think if they can get it worked out, you know, for the right amount, you know, I would like to see him in a Ducks uniform for at least another couple of years. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know if he's going to score 20 goals every season here on out. Uh, but, you know, part part of that issue comes with the line juggling. I mean, you know, we've seen him on the first line. We've seen him on the fourth line, Eddie. So it's it's a little difficult to evaluate how he's going to perform in the, in the future. And I think maybe that's probably uh, part of the issue for Murray, too, in trying to uh, get a deal done. Yeah, and we've, we've seen that a lot with players last year. Obviously, Cogliano spending a lot of time up top on the first line and the second line last year, and you know his numbers really benefited. And it's really the, the Corey Perry, Ryan Getzlaff effect that it has on players. Obviously, we've seen that with Maroon, Bolesky, Cogliano. You know, anybody who usually plays on that first line gets, you know, Dustin Penner when he was up there uh, getting a lot of, of, you know, inflated numbers. And, and, you know, I think if he doesn't play with Garrett Perry and Getzlaff, can he get 20 goals again? I, I really don't unless, you know, um, he steps it up and, and you know in place with a guy like Kessler even and and, and you know benefits from from their play too. But I, you know I, I do like him. I, I think he brings some more than scoring to the game, and we've seen that through his career so far. He's a physical guy, and you know he plays hard every game. So I think you know, that that alone is worth signing him. But I don't think that that's worth signing him for you know four or five million that he wants. I think if they can settle around you know three million five hundred and. Um, and that's good. And, and then obviously if you put in a no trade clause, it, it, it kind of limits your options when if you need to move him to sign other guys. So I think, you know, that's obviously what they're going to work out. And, and we'll see if they get that done, um, you know, by the off season or the draft. Yeah, and I guess uh, one, I guess one last little uh, point too would be that, that top line. Um, you, you know, they've moved uh, Corey Perry. Uh, around a little bit. He went to the second line for a couple games, and we saw him on that third line for one game. You know, for the top line, uh, who would you put on the top line, Eddie? Would you still stick with Perry and Getzloff and then uh, 
figure out someone at the left wing, or would you try to uh, do the split up that you know Boudreaux's done for you know three or four games now? Um, no, I, I would keep um, pairing Guts off on the same line. I, I think that's our our uh, best chance at winning when you, when you put those guys um, on the same line. Those are two best players, and you know you you, you can see it work in, in different situations. You know you see it work in, in Chicago when Taves and Kane play on different lines, but I think that's a little bit different of a situation. Um, I I don't think we have a, a Hosa or, or or a Sharp who can play on that first line with with Taves and and it doesn't make a difference when when Kane goes down and plays on another line. Um, you know we've we've got some really good wingers, um, but they're they're all, they, you know they're not at the level of Hosa or Sharp. So, you know separating our best players. Um, and, you know, it kind of limits what you know. I think it takes away from Getzlaff as much. It puts a little bit more pressure on him when you put a put him with different guys like Palmieri and, and Boleski. Uh, uh, so no, I think if to shorten it down, I think we should definitely keep Getzlaff and Perry on on the same line. And as far as the left wing, which is something you know that was kind of an issue uh, last season, and it's it's been in this season too. Um, is there one player that you would like to put on there, or someone that you'd like to try out other than uh, Bolesky? Yeah, I, you know it's tough. You haven't really seen one guy take that role in a long time. Um, you know we've had a lot of guys go through that role. You know when Bobby Ryan was here, he went through that role and. And he didn't fit, traded him. So, uh, you know, we've had different guys start that one. Silverberg came in. We thought he might be able to play that. And he's played second line. He's solidified himself down there. Uh, DSP played there, but he's gone. Belaski, Cogliano, Maroon. And, and nobody's just, you know, taken. They've all played decently well. But nobody's taken that role and run with it. And I, I think, you know, nobody on in this team right now is gonna is gonna take that role and, and stick with it all season. Uh, you know, next season I think we'll, we have to look at, at some of the guys we have in in our in our prospects and and you look at a guy like Nick Ritchie or, or Cordillis or or just or Nason and, and and you know hope that those are some of the guys that might be able to take that left wing spot in the future. Yeah, definitely next season it's going to be interesting to see. I I think for, for right now I wouldn't mind Bolesky on there. Um, see how he does uh, with the Twins and just let it roll that way for now. I think that he's probably the best fit uh, at this moment in time. And then uh, if something happens, if you know if he doesn't play as well or whatnot, which I, I doubt, but if something does happen, then maybe you do take uh, someone like a set catch or, or a Fletchman and throw him up there and then try to roll with something. But um, I just hope that they get this uh, – lineup you know all ironed out and, and figured out uh, before the playoffs especially when we get the uh, botman back yeah you know you don't want to be changing the lines around constantly in the playoffs you want to go in with with guys familiar playing with each other and you know maybe five ten games before the playoffs you want to have a lineup set and you want to have everybody playing with this with the same guys and getting used to playing with the same guys and, and get on a roll exactly and i think that's the key going forward uh you know into the playoffs so we're going to wrap up here. Um, you know, uh, one last quick note. Uh, you know, we've been around almost a, a little over a year now and uh, had a lot of giveaways this week, and we still have uh, two more contests for you. Uh, we've got one that's um, a selfie contest where you take a photo with one of our shirts. Um, that'll be, um, you know, you just tag us on Twitter, Facebook, or um Instagram, and we will uh, look at those. You have till the end of the month. Uh, there's an article up with all the rules and whatnot. And our one other contest we have is uh, two tickets to Fan Appreciation Night. Uh, last podcast, we gave out a one word on there, a keyword. This week, we have another keyword. The word is want, W-A-N-T. And listen to the next two coming up. There'll be four words total. You'll put them together as a phrase, and then you'll email us what you think the phrase is. So listen to the last show, this one, and the next two. And uh, someone will be randomly uh, picked out of that group to go to Fan Appreciation Night, two tickets. And that's it. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll be back next week. The Anaheim Ducks are the Stanley Cup champions.